today I want to talk about the power of email marketing. Should you be doing email marketing? Is it still relevant? Can you still build your business and grow your business with email marketing? The answer is yes. In 2024, email marketing is still alive and well. And I improve because I use it in my business to grow and I teach it to my clients to grow as well. So let's talk about email marketing. And I can remember back in the day when I was running a few businesses, they were brick and mortar businesses. I learned email marketing for the first time. I actually paid a coach and bought into a program to learn how to email market. And when I did that, it literally set my revenue on fire in a good way. I remember we would fill boot camps and programs and I made a lot of money off of an email list. And I realized back then the value of an email list. And it really hasn't changed. Today, my email fills, again, helps fill my uh, virtual events. It helps get me podcasts. It uh, gets me sales. There's so many benefits to my email list, even getting referrals. So there's a lot of ways to use an email list. But if you don't have one or you kind of forget to build it, then I hope that you'll leave inspired and encouraged today because an email list is an asset to your business. When I sold all of those businesses years ago, my email list was part of the sale. It was an asset to the business. There was, it was worth money to the business. And it's no different today, all of these years later. So if you're not using email to grow your business, then what are you doing? What are you using it for? The thing that's so great about email is it allows us to basically build that tribe of people that are interested in hearing from us, right? So you can go and see who opened your emails. You can see how many times they open your email. And if people opt out of your email, that's a good thing because that just means you're not for them. They're not for you. So you don't worry about things like that. And sometimes people will opt out just because maybe they're getting too many emails and they feel overwhelmed or inundated. But then sometimes they'll come back and they'll end up back on your email list when you maybe make a different kind of an offer. Maybe you have a lead magnet that you offer or you're saying, you know, get on my list and subscribe for this. And so a lot of times people will get back on your email list too. So never worry if somebody unsubscribes from your email list. The other thing I have found is that sometimes people will end up on your email list maybe in uh, four or five times because they've opted into many things that you've done or put out there. And so they don't need to be getting four or five different emails from you. And so they might opt out with some of those emails. So there's all kinds of reasons people opt out from your email list. So never, ever let that worry you or be a factor or stop you from being an email ninja. So I want to encourage you to use email to grow your business. Now, let's talk about email marketing and why it's so powerful. First of all, these are people that have asked to be on your list. I mean, they should be people that have asked to be on your list, right? And even if you have bought a list, which I really don't recommend because if you have bought a list and these people don't know you from Adam, it's going to be a lot more difficult uh, for you to get any kind of response or, uh, in my opinion, results from that email list. Not saying it can't be done. It can be, but it's going to be a little bit harder. Whereas when you bring people onto your email list, when they say that they want to be there until they don't, right, then you have a captive audience. The thing that I love about this too is it gives you a way to really nurture them, stay in front of them, and continue to share value with what you're all about. Continue to share the things that you learn and the things that you know. And not only are you helping people with your emails because you're giving them insights and tips and strategies and or whatever it is you do, right? It, if you are in coaching or consulting, you are sharing your knowledge and your skills, you should be giving value, but you're helping people. It's a way to help them really for free with just some of your time. But at some point, the idea is that hopefully they'll be influenced to buy. Hopefully they'll be influenced to 
take some action at some point and work with you in some capacity. Now, some of the mistakes that I see people make in their email is they're only giving value and they never make offers. And that isn't going to help you grow your business. So you want to have a balance of always giving value. You should always give value. Even in an offer email, you still want to give some sort of value. But you want to have a balance of value and then also making offers. Because if you don't ever make offers, then you really are just spending time for really no return. And email marketing is probably one of the best returns on your investment that you can get because it doesn't cost you anything. Now, yes, I, you have a, maybe have a CRM that you're paying for, right? And so there's maybe a little bit of cost there to store that email, to be able to send those emails. But for the most part, it's very, very inexpensive to email market. So when you are emailing to people, you're actually keeping your brand in front of them. You're keeping yourself top of mind and you're building more loyalty into your business. You're building ongoing relationships. Again, until they say they don't want to be there anymore, you get that opportunity to keep that relationship going and stay top of mind. So I have had people come to me, maybe that have been on my email list for a couple of years and they're finally ready to buy. Maybe back then when they first got on my list, they weren't ready to buy. But then all of a sudden they come to me and they're ready to buy. Well, this happens because I've nurtured those people. In marketing, there's a statistic that only one to three percent are now buyers. And those are the people that we're trying to capture, right? We want those now buyers because that is what makes our business go round, right? That's what makes us grow our business. But there is this whole other 96 or 97%, 98% that aren't ready. They're just not ready when they see you for the first time. But getting them on your email list, getting them into your community, or you know, being able to stay in front of them and stay top of mind and nurture that relationship, well, at some point, the goal is hopefully they will be ready to buy from you. And if they're not, that's okay too, right? It's not costing you anything really to have them on your email list. But the whole idea is that you get to stay in front of them until they are ready. So it's not uncommon to have people come to you. Um, it's really feeding your pipeline. And so you want that email list to be built. You want to continue to build it. You want to continue to grow it. And then you want to make sure that you're consistent in your email marketing. And so I want to talk about this for a minute, because if all you ever do is send an email to pitch your services, well, then people are definitely going to leave. They're going to opt out because they, they're not looking for a sales pitch all the time. But if the intention on your email list is to nurture those people and to keep that relationship going and keep yourself top of mind, then when you do have an offer, those people, a lot of them will take action. And so it's a great way to just drive sales in your business. So I want to give you some tips here for effective email marketing. All right. The first thing is make sure you build a quality list. If you have a bunch of people on your email list that are not the right people, they are going to unsubscribe because your content and the value that you're sending out is not going to be relevant for them. So you want to build a quality list. A lot of people are out there just building a list. They're like, OK, I have 10,000 people on my list but only 100 people open their emails. Well, they've got the wrong people on their list. So a quality list over quantity is much more important. I just want you to know that. Having uh, the right people on your list is going to far outweigh the amount of people that you have on your list. One of the marketing strategies out there to build a list, besides lead magnets, I'm sure you know about lead magnets, but summits. Summits are to get from other people's list, right? So you, the idea is you build a summit, you bring in speakers, and then everybody shares to the email list. And then people are subscribing to that summit and you're building your list. And it is a great way to get hundreds of people a month on your list or a thousand people a month on your list if you're very aggressive, but they won't all be the right people. 
all right because someone else's list even though there might be some similarities they might have a list that isn't really your target audience or your ideal people so build a quality list quality over quantity all day long all right number two is segment your audience this is really, really important because when you are sending emails, you want those emails to be relevant to the people that you're talking to. So a good example of this is years ago when I was coaching small business owners, I would have plumbers and contractors and financial advisors and CPAs, and you can see all the different types of businesses, right? Auto repair shop. And what I would do is I would keep those lists segmented because the message that I sent to an auto repair shop might not be the same message I would send to a CPA. So when you segment the list, it really makes the value of your email so much better because now you can your message and everything you're saying will be relevant to the people that you're marketing to. Because if they're getting your emails and they go, this is not for me, they're going to opt out. They're going to leave your email list. So segment your audience. It will make it so much easier for you to market to them and to be relevant to that audience so they'll see the value in being on your list. And I think a lot of people don't do this and it really hurts their targeted campaigns. It really hurts their email marketing. And ultimately, again, it has people leaving them versus staying. All right. Number three is make sure that you craft compelling subject lines. This is so important. If you want to get great open rates, my emails get 40% open rates most of the time because you want a great subject line. Now, I'm not talking about like bait and switch here. Don't have a subject line that has nothing to do with the email just to get people to open because that will just make people mad, okay? Make sure the subject line is compelling, but it also should be relevant to your email copy, to what you are saying. So your subject line is the first thing people see and it will determine whether or not they open that email or not. So you want an attention grabbing and relevant subject line. One of the great things about this too is you can play around with subject lines and you can kind of see what your audience, what your email list loves to open. And this will also really help you in your marketing. You'll be able to see what do they find valuable? What are the things that they're the most interested in? And the great thing about email marketing is you can track all of this, right? You have the analytics and you're able to see all of these things. So it's just really a, a powerful, powerful way to market in your business. All right, make sure you provide value. Number four, I already talked about that. Your emails have to be filled with value. They have to be informative. They have to be content rich, but you can also make special offers. You can also give them exclusive updates about what you're doing. I love to even share testimonials and client results in my emails because Nothing influences people more than when they see the results you are helping your clients get. So sharing that in your email is great as well. So I do a mix in my emails. I share value. I give content. I try to keep them content rich. I also give client results in emails and insights and nuances and strategies and tips but then I also make offers. And I personally do not find anything wrong with making an offer at the end of an email after you give great value if it's not super pitchy. Like I will almost always put at the end of an email, hey, if you want to do this, you know, you can book a call. Here's my call link. Or, hey, go check out this video if you want to go deeper into this. You know, you can go grab this video. And so those kinds of calls to action, there's nothing wrong with those. And then maybe when they get to the video, I might actually have a call to action to book a call or to get into a program or to buy something. So you do want calls to action. You do want to make offers of some kind. And sometimes those offers are to get a direct sale and sometimes they're not. But you do want to make sure you do that. But you always want to provide value as well. And then number five is test and optimize. I already talked about the great thing about subject lines is you can kind of test and you can kind of see what people respond to that are on your email list. But you want to always be testing and optimizing everything that you do in your marketing, whether that's your email list or what you are doing on social media. 
So continue to do different things in your emails to see what people are responding to the most. So I hope you found this valuable. Use email marketing in your business if you are not. And don't forget to make offers. Sometimes I see people make so many offers. You're like, you never give any value. All you do is sell, 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 sell. And then I see other people that I never see them try to sell. They're just emailing, emailing, emailing. Well, that's not a good balance either. So you need a balance if you're going to use email marketing to grow your business. And that is really the purpose of having an email list. It's not just to stay top of mind, but why do you want to stay top of mind? So when they're ready to buy, they know, like, and trust you. So I hope you found this valuable. Let me know your thoughts. And if I can help you in your business, book a call with me at acarden.com. And I want to invite you to grab a free training that I put together for you. If you're ready to grow and scale your coaching, consulting, or professional service business, all you need to do is go to expertinyou.biz. Grab that free training, and by the way, that will put you on my email list. I can't wait to get to know you and build that relationship with you. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.